Welcome to Life as Usual, a video blog dedicated to making you a more impactful leader through the ideas of self-awareness, execution, and direction. And today, I want to talk about a form of hiding that I call exaggerated goals. These are goals that seem like they're you taking on the world, but in reality, it's you hiding from it. So what's the frustration? Well, if you don't understand you're doing this, then chances are you're gonna fall into the trap. Even though unconsciously you might be doing it because you're hiding, consciously you don't know it, and you're going to lose the momentum you have as an entrepreneur or a leader or creative. You're not gonna be able to put your vision into the world because you're going to go closer to the mean and become invisible. Exaggerated goals can take many forms, from it being not falsifiable, to it being too huge, to it's something that you know you can't complete. How do you make something falsifiable? Making something falsifiable is relatively simple, but before I talk about that, let's talk about Karl Popper. Karl Popper was a philosopher, and he started noticing that people would really fit narratives into the view that they have. This is modernly called confirmation bias, meaning that you'll confirm a story no matter how crazy it is to fit your worldview. Making something falsifiable gives you an out. Why would you want that? Well, that out helps you determine how to move or pivot with the next step. If you never think you're wrong, then you'll never change. And if you never change, you won't have an impact because the people around you will see that and they won't follow you. Is your current goal something that can fail? And if it can fail, how can it fail? What does failure look like? If you don't make something falsifiable, when you fail, you won't have any learnings from it so that you can become a better and more impactful leader. And if you're not becoming better, you're dying. Your skills are dying, your personality is dying, your trust is dying. Why do we get better when we recognize when we're doing this, we're making ridiculous goals? We get better when we recognize when we're making ridiculous goals because when we make ridiculous goals, it's just a form of hiding. If you make goals that can't fail, or if you make goals that are too big, when they fail, you give yourself an out. Well, I was never going to make the next Facebook. I mean, it was impossible. I don't know why. <laughs> we get better because we recognize ourselves hiding. And hiding, or recognizing that you're hiding, is the first step of getting back into the light and what I call getting back into the fight. How do you not make enormous goals? Well, we're gonna do this through the lens of self-awareness, execution, and direction. And through this, you'll make sure that you're not making enormous goals and goals that actually matter. You have to be aware that a good goal has a couple of components. One is it has to be falsifiable. As I mentioned, it has to be something that you can be proven wrong. And some questions you wanna ask yourself as you're thinking about it being falsifiable is what happens if I'm wrong? What would make this wrong? What are some of the catastrophic events that'll happen if this goes wrong? You wanna think about it from the other side, not a success, but a failure. And if you do that, what you'll find is you'll probably have a more efficient goal to begin with. Two, it is thoughtful. The biggest problem I had with my own personal story was I wasn't thoughtful about the goals I, I wanted. I needed to cut that number from 500,000 for, for the first month of a website that didn't exist to something more reasonable, like 50 or 100 people that are real fans. If you don't do the research as to what is reasonable, then you'll miss the opportunity to make the next step. Three is next step. There's gotta be a clear next step to your goals. How does it work? There's gotta be a pathway to success. And if you don't see that pathway to success, or if it's taking forever, then you probably need to shrink that goal, chop it up, or do something else with it. How do you execute on that? Well, I would take a sheet of paper with my goal. And what I would do is I would write columns for falsifiable, I would write a column for research, and I would write a column that has uh, steps. And in each 
row under each column, I would take the goal and I would try to think of points, right? How does this become falsifiable? As I mentioned before, what is wrong? How can I make this wrong? What's the other side of this? What if my perception is off? I would tackle questions like that inside of the falsifiable column. The next column would be, is this researched? What research do I have to make to make this true? What are the things surrounding this goal? What, what, why did I come up with this goal in the first place? What is it connected to personally? And also, what is it connected to in terms of the industry? What is the best practice? I need to understand what I got this goal from, where I got it from, and if it's feasible. And the third step is once I've made the falsifiable thing, I've made the is it feasible thing, I need to write down step by step. How do I get from where I am today to completion? And it's got to be something within a period of about a week to a month. The last part's very key. Goals that go forever aren't goals at all. They're ridiculous. You want to make sure that your goal can fit within that time frame. Directional wise, how do you set direction with this? Well, this needs to be communicated to your team. They need to vet it. They need to understand it. They need to understand what their roles are in it. Who owns what? A lot of the times the goals end up on the wrong track because there's no ownership and there's no real delegation, right? And those two things are on the opposite side of the spectrum. Sometimes a leader takes over everything and says they're going to handle everything. Well, that's a big problem because the team doesn't know where they can help and you end up killing yourself in terms of burden. Or you don't really delegate anything and you just figure everybody will pick things up. That's a big problem because since no one owns anything, no one's really responsible for anything. And you end up in a lot of trouble because of that. Let's talk about self-awareness. It's being aware of the falsification uh, research and step-by-steps. You want to execute with that by making a nice paper that has your goal and breaking those, that goal down into those three sections and executing on them. And then direction is you want to pass it around to your team so they understand what it is, who owns what, and is it even feasible? You want that feedback in order to make this document stronger. Oh,